buddy. Uh, me and Eric is getting into this discussion already. It used to be you had to stop to let pedestrians across at a crosswalk. At a crosswalk. Right. If they pop out before the crosswalk, you nail them. <laughs> well, don't really do that. I'm just playing. Um, That's why Dennis but, isn't in jail right now. But <laughs> I remember just reading a, one of the new laws in Connecticut now, and somebody can call in and correct me if I'm right or wrong. Now it doesn't matter where the person steps off to go across the street. You have to give them the right of way. That's, that's what oh, I heard. That's not what we, you and I were discussing. Well, that's what I was discussing. No, okay. I was discussing that if you're at a crosswalk, but there is a traffic light there and it's green, I believe the traffic has the right of way, not the crosswalk. Because, I mean, that, they're impeding traffic. But I don't know. I don't. Well, if a car is coming 50, 60 miles an hour up to a crosswalk right. and they, they got the green light to go ahead and you decide to step out in front of that car 10 feet before it, at the crosswalk. Whose fault is it? I, I would assume, it's I would assume it'd be the pedestrian's fault. Right. But that's common sense. Yeah, but you've got to, as, as I've heard on Fox TV so many times, Americans aren't stupid. And I take issue with that. I think half the population are as dumb as dirt. Probably more. But um, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, I think that's why there are traffic lights. There are many crossroads, no traffic lights, which have the pedestrian crossing. And pedestrian crossing does have right of way. Yeah. All the time. All right. But not if you're going to step out in the middle of the road, there's no crosswalks, and you're telling me the new law is... Well, see, that doesn't surprise it doesn't me, because when they make these things up, they don't think that far ahead. Like I was just telling you, they had uh, the public hearing on the roundabout they want to put at uh, Broad and... Uh, and Williams. And Williams Street. So I was reading what some people were saying, and somebody brought up that their concern was people that are on bicycles and people that need to get across the street. With the lights now, the Go pedestrians on. can push in order to walk across. Right, right. Um, in a roundabout, you don't have that. But the roundabouts that are at um, Howard and Pequot right yeah. now, the bicycles just follow the roundabout, just like everybody else. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to ride a bike like right. you do a car. Right. I mean, you're supposed to be on the same road, which I see a lot of young people that are on the opposite side of the road going against traffic. And then on Howard Street, at the beginning at Bank, there's a sign that said bicycles have the right to use the full lane. Yeah. That, that, that right lane. I'm still angry about Bank and where the fire station is. What is that? Oh. I can never remember. It doesn't, ma it doesn't matter. Yeah. But... Where it starts at, to go into the city. Where Bank and um, Howard right. start. Right after Howard, there's a sign, and it says up ahead that right, right lane is straight, and the left lane mandatory to turn left at the fire station, right after the fire station. Every day, with no question almost, there's, there are people in cars in that left lane, and they will go straight. Oh, yeah. Through well, what is wrong with the idiots in this stinking town to put a cop on that corner and stop those people from doing that and give them a ticket? Same thing with... You'd, watch, you'd be surprised how fast that would stop, too, as soon as they know there's a cop. There. That's right. But the other way, going, if you're going southbound on Bank, the left lane turns left. The middle lane, it says only turn left. There are many people in that, left, in that lane that still go straight. Oh, down by where? They go past... Howard Street, they're supposed to turn I know what you right, mean. Yeah. but they don't. They'll, they'll go straight yeah. onto bank. I mean, this is, this is in rocket science, and this is how I think 
that people really are stupid, especially in New London. I, I don't think they're stupid. I think they know exactly what they're doing. I think they're doing it intentionally. You know they're oh, doing it no, intentionally. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the, dr the drivers. They are intentionally oh, so doing how did, it. How I'm talking about the, the officials in, in New London and how New London is, is governed. They, we, we all know New London is corrupt. They only get involved. The one word that will get them involved, if you mention the word sue, then they, then they, then they perk up a little bit. Because it, they don't want to get sued. Do you want to know something? It's going to take a major accident yeah. at either one of those crossroads, and then the other, well, that somebody's going to sue the, the, uh, the city of New London for not following the laws, for not adhering to those laws. There's a whole list of laws they don't follow in this city. They don't care. I've said, for how long have I said the five corners at... Um, Truman and yeah. Bank and um, Squire um, and Montauk Avenue, that, that is a nightmare. It is. And what, what do you get back when you bring it up at the city council? What do you get back? Well, some of that's state, too. That's what they tell you. Yeah. It's state. Well, it's true. They're the ones that have to. Well, if it's state, then what's it going to take? Because they wanted to at one time to go up Bank Street so you get to Jefferson Avenue, yeah, and you know on that corner it's just vacant land with a sad eyes boat sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I think he might even own that bit of property, but I could be wrong. Okay, this, they wanted to, and I think the city was pushing for this. Now they wanted to make an offshoot right to Jefferson Avenue from Bank Street, so that when you hit the light and somebody wants to go forward and somebody behind him wants to turn right onto Jefferson, they can't go nowhere. So I thought that was a pretty good idea, but it never happened. But this, 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 you brought up a good point about the Williams and Broad Street. I didn't, I didn't think about that at the time. Well, they're going to have one at the high school, too. Well, and I know, but there, are there cross, crosswalks at, at Jefferson and what is that, whatever that street is? You never can remember oh, that name either. It starts that. with a C. Yeah. Um, Chester Street or something? Is it Chester? I don't um, know. Something like that. You never can remember that name, uh, those. But that's, they want to cross uh, around about there. So. Well, what they have, I think, is you go <laughs> where, the new, where they have another entrance into the school because there's construction still going on at the old main entrance, which will be opened up again down the line. Um, I think there's a crosswalk there. Crosswalk there, I think. But you know, it is a, it's it's something you got to think about. You got to design it. The only way you can get around that is if you're going to have a sidewalk that with his land it will go in the circle, so that uh, people can walk around the circle. But okay. you're still going to have the issue of the, and they're probably going to have crosswalks there, and you're going to be obligated to stop. If you come down into a, a circle and there's somebody waiting across, you're obligated to stop and yep. let them get across. And I think that's a good idea. I know. I, I do think it's a good idea. But Now, what you mentioned before about the people driving up and then trying to scoot in, that's not, that's not good. That's not good. I hate when people it's, do that I hate to me. when people do that. You I know would what? never because do that to it, anybody. Because it, the line is so far backed up sometimes. Well, then again, if you put a cop on there and they stop doing that, coming up and sneaking in, that line's going to be even further. I don't and care about the line being further. You know, because, first of all, it's New London's fault for, com for causing all this traffic. There's no other way. Look at right where we are on, on Willits Avenue, right? All... Those apartment buildings, luxury apartments. Well, that's Waterford. That's Waterford. They, they don't have to have any low income or anything. I understand that. It doesn't matter. What I'm talking about is the exit and entrance to those apartments is on Willits Avenue. And Willits Avenue gets backed up all the time. It gets backed up going that way, going into Waterford. Going into it Waterford. It doesn't get yeah, backed coming, up coming into New London. No. It doesn't. So that's, that's an issue they're going to have to deal with. And then people are crossing from Willits over to Bank at the old uh, Bank of America building or Chase, whatever that is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, and you can't blame them. No. Because the light 
at Willits and Bank is is off a lot. You know, you gotta people out there have got to realize that we weren't meant to be here so that we could come up with all kinds of ways for us not to do anything or use our brain. I mean, common sense plays a big role in all this. If you're stepping, like you said earlier, if you're stepping out between two cars and traffic is flying by, you step out there, that obviously shows you have no freaking common sense. Right. And you're going to get hurt. Now, how these laws are going to work with that is, I don't know. And how do we get on this subject? You started it. <laughs> I'll tell you another thing about all this. Being hearing impaired, I can't hear it lots of times the traffic coming, and my wife is telling me just like, wait, is wait, it, wait. Is it that bad? I mean, it can be. Yeah? Oh, it can be. Huh. What it, okay, um, I saw an ad on TV for hearing aids um, that you can get in, over the table. They were like in hundreds of dollars instead of the mm -hmm. thousands of dollars. Is that just a bunch of crap? Or? I think it is. Yeah. Um, I have been told they're not, what are they called? They're not hearing aids, they're hearing as, like assistance, or um, it, it's not traditional of what, now granted, are hearing aids overpriced? Absolutely. Oh, that's because of insurance. It's, uh, well, that's why. It, it's, I mean, the hearing aids should not be $6,000. If anything, they should be 600 I think once you retire or once you start collecting your full Social Security, that stuff should be in Medicare. You shouldn't have to pay it for does. It does. No, but you shouldn't have to pay for them. Oh, no. no. I, under, cause I, the, I'm on my fourth set. I had to pay for the first three, 100%. I didn't have any insurance regarding Well, under Medicare, they, pay, they covered, I think it was 70%. I know at Foxwoods they would cover, um, they would donate. I don't know, it's either two to two to four thousand dollars towards your okay. hearing aids. You know, but the other thing is, why do they? I would quite. Why are hearing aids technically good for only four years? I mean, oh, come on. The thing is that your coverage, your warranty, mine with, with the company I'm with lasts three years. Other companies last four years. It's time to get a new pair. So. It's a scam. It's, it's, oh, a, it's scam. a scam. It is a scam. They, they make stuff nowadays to last as long. Well, no, the hearing aids last. It's not the yeah, aids. It's the years. batteries. It's batteries like, um, well, now it's the lithium-ion batteries yeah. and then the rechargers and stuff like that. That's, I mean, they've, they've advanced tremendously. You got it now. Let's see if I can do this right. Hi, you're live. I am. Yes, yes you, you are. are. So what's going on? Well, you tell me. Who do you have on tomorrow? Larry. Where'd you get the idea for that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, he's been asking for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. We just had to work it out. Okay. Transportation. Stealing my guests. Okay. How you doing, Karen? Where do you run for office again? When? Yeah, where do you run for office again? I'm going to tell everybody you're a Democrat. <laughs> hey, Karen, maybe the mayor will thank a, me for coming if, to one meeting. Karen, if you ran <laughs> as a Democrat, you probably would get in. Look what happened with Jason Katala and uh, Andre Baumgartner. Baumgartner. Oh, Bill Sadi told me years ago. The first time I ran, Bill Sadi came up and said, "You know, if you if you register as a Democrat, we'd get you in." Not right. Hey, what's this? No, it isn't. What's this I'm hearing about? Um, the city council or whoever put out a thing about looking for people to get on the boards and agencies? Yeah, Joanna did. Yeah, so what about the people that have been there waiting for a year or more? Well, what about the people that got thanked profusely in a letter that's going to council Monday night for serving on a board that they came to one meeting? And who would that be? someone that you know. But it wouldn't be Martha Marks, would it? No. Uh, oh, that's right. She came to a couple. All right, all right. Do you know what I found out about her? What? I was told, uh, sad I wasn't sure, but um, that she can ma stay on the council, city council, and also be the state I, I don't, I, I've been, I got to look that up. I got to look that up in the, in the, the charter. I, I don't think she can because... Well, I know as mayor, you're not supposed to hold another job. 
mayor is a full-time job. But isn't job. that a conflict of interest? I, I would think so. But then she said she didn't know she could do it because she's so busy as a nurse. But now they're going to have to pay her when she's, or maybe not, no. uh, when she's off doing her duties as a state senator. Especially since I think state senators are going to be getting a big raise. Yeah, but wait a minute. That's a good point. I'm wondering now if uh, Nolan gets paid as, his a, month, as, as a, a cop when he's not there. Right. Is he still getting paid? Uh, you know what? I don't think they do. I think they can have the time off, but their job is still guaranteed. Yeah, I know, but it, I'm just wondering if he's But he doesn't get paid. It's a, pay, a non-paid leave. You think so? I don't... I would think so, but then, you know. So what's coming up good in New London? What's coming up good in New London? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's a question to a question, Karen. There's obviously nothing good coming up in New London. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a tough one. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It'll take me a few years to think about that. That is no way to keep your job on a, a border agency. Wasn't this, um, was the ethics was the ethics board being questioned now for what they on on some situations? I thought I read something like that in the paper. No, nah, I didn't read nothing like that. And I really no. don't care. No, no it's just Londrigan overstepped his bounds when he made it a legality what he was saying about the uh, complaint, and it's. It's not a legal issue. It's an ethics issue. Basically, for him to tell the counselors, don't worry about it, ignore it. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. All that is is his opinion. That's nothing That's right. written in stone. And my opinion is we should go to the state board. Well, we sent, board we sent And file stuff. a complaint against Londrigan. We sent stuff to the state ethics board on, on this case. We and, asked them questions. Yeah, but did anybody get back to us? I, not that I know of. Okay, so don't but you I think don't you we understand? File a complaint you got a Democratic with the state party board against Lonergan. Listen, they're going to cover Lonergan's butt. You ain't going to get yeah. near Lonergan. But you got a Democratic party in control of the city. You got a Democratic party in control of the state. I don't know what party the the ethics board chairman or whatever in Hartford is, but. These, these folks are just going to keep covering their butt. And yeah. then, you know, it, that's what I said. We banged our heads against the wall for, jeez, I don't know how many years. And yeah. for, for nothing. And, and, and all the, they had to do, all they had to do with that last complaint is come in and tell us their side of the story. And I'm sure it would be different than the one before and the one after. It's, it's nothing, oh, is, nothing is going to change in New London. Nothing hasn't changed in New, no, in New London in 50 years. That's the way they like it. Well, some people, that's the way they like it. Yeah. All right, what else you got, Karen? Uh, not much. Okay. All right. You know, well, have a good we show are, tomorrow. We are gonna, is it just you? No, Larry, tomorrow. Work on the, the budget for next year for senior affairs. In the senior center. Yeah. Who does that now? Who, who decides what you need? Ask me that after next Tuesday, because we're going in. Going in what, to the console? No. Where are you going? To the coordinator at the senior center to oh. see, you know, to find, we want, we want the money. Have you heard any more about the building? Nope. When are they supposed to break ground? There was a guy there for a couple that? of days working outside. Oh, that's been being worked on. I haven't seen that's, anything. That's been inside. being worked on. I haven't looked up, you know, to see if there's been any changes in the gym. But what what happened, as Karen would vouch, that we sold the Martin Center to this guy that does a lot of work downtown, I guess, right. for a dollar. Right, and he sold part of it for $7.6 million. And we also pay him $50,000 right. a year, so, so far, so on. You know, just another one of these great deals that by our illustrious, illustrious council, that, that they just have no clue about what they're doing. They just like to waste our money. See, they, I don't know me, I... 
I see all the building and everything going on downtown, and I've never seen that since I've been back to New London. So in one way, it looks like a very good thing. But our history in this city with big companies is not a good one. No. So no. you would think that instead of saying, oh, we got all these apartments coming in, hey, we're set, we're good, our our grand whatever is is trillion dollars or some stupid thing. Um, so we're good. But they never mm -hmm. stop and think about what if something happens and they can't rent all these apartments. And people, how long when, is some... When does EB have to start paying full taxes? But not only that, how long do you think when all these apartments are done, especially down on Howard Street and stuff, and Bank Street being what it is, it never went to phase two on, on what they were going to do with it. Um, how long is somebody going to put up with every day having to sit in that friggin' traffic to get home when they're going to say, you mm -hmm. know what, I can move closer to my home. I mean, I could just stay at my home, you know, mm -hmm. find another job. Well, they wouldn't do that. I don't no, think. But I'm saying, when does EB have to start paying full taxes? Well, they supposedly do after a certain amount of years. I know, but when is that? Well, if it's anything like Pfizer's, it would be 10 years, but these are apartments, so. For no, I'm talking about EV itself. Oh, no, uh, well. Oh, oh. You know what? There's, there's a, one of the buildings over in, in Groton that's Pfizer's that was, uh, I don't know, I can't remember if it was emptied or, and taken down. Yeah. And I think they were going to sell it, and I think EB wanted to get it. Right. Um, I think if Electric Boat had the opportunity, they would pick up as much property as they could in Groton and dump New London. I really you know, think they would do that. If it's oh, I do too. If it, I think as soon as they have to start paying their full taxes, within yeah. two years, they'll be out of here. They didn't have the room over at EB. That's why they ended up buying where they did, buying the old Pfizer piece of land. I'm, but but they're building over there now. I know. That's what I was just going to say. You know, but yeah. the, you got to remember also, Karen, that those new condominiums being built on Howard Street mm -hmm. is a supposed to be a gated community, and they're not going to be cheap, and they're being designed more for EB employees, so they don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, I know. So, but there's a lot of places that see my th my thing is always, it sounds good, gated community, um, all this other good stuff. Uh, you know, people paying fifteen, two thousand dollars a month for rent, so you figure you got good people in there and they're not going to mess nothing up. <laughs> but what happens when you can't fill them apartments? It's those not going to be apartments. Well, you guys know I you... lived in a gated community in Fairfield. Okay. Okay. This supposed to be a pool, recreational centers, it's supposed all to be a these lot. Am, uh, the amenities. Small, the smallest piece of property, because it was all homes, the smallest piece of property was one in one point eight acres. Where? In Fairfield. And where? Fairfield. It was Fairfield. a gated community. There was somebody at the gate twenty four seven. Fairfield. Connecticut? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, it's a much nicer area than here, but... Um, well, those people can afford to they, have yeah, a I gated mean, those place people, yeah, and, they're and going, hire their own security. They're going, taking the train to the city or going to Greenwich for big jobs or anything like that. Um, I And they're being paid six-figure six incomes. Not, and not just the lower six figures, a lot of them getting a higher six figure. They can afford that. This, this area cannot afford that. Espe I especially that. when you have nothing what we in have downtown to, uh, New London. What we have to watch out for, not that we're going to be able to do anything about it unless they wrote something in the, the contract with EB, is when they get done building in Groton, if they build a place that can do what they're doing here, it's automatically beneficial to them to get out of here because they're going to save money. They're going to save all the money for people to have to come over here. And then you're going to see a major depression in there. After Pfizer left, I said to the council and I said to ODP, 
if you don't put something like they did in Rhode Island, you don't put something in the contract. So if you're going to give them an abatement for 10 years, that they have to stay at least 20 years, or they're going to have to pay that whole abatement back. You have to write, yeah, that has to be. And they didn't do it. Did they learn anything with Pfizer? Probably not. No. Well, then it's going to happen again. Yep. Of course it is. And then you're going to see if, if those property, that property that EB has now ends up empty, you're going to see a big, huge depression in, in New London. Because mm -hmm. what other company would go in there? Oh, now, no. maybe, you could, maybe you could make it into a illustrious shopping mall or something like that. But um, the malls are going out. That's right. I mean, go in the Crystal Mall, you see how dead that is half the time. Now, see, this is another thing. I don't know what kind maybe of deal. Maybe Amazon will come in there. If Connecticut College, instead of putting their kids downtown. Move the entire thing downtown? Turn the, turn the, the mall in Waterford and some kind of college thing. Well, from what I understand, they defaulted on, on their... Um, but I thought I read someone bought it. Macy's is separate from the mall. Somebody I heard did, but I mean, they were, I don't know if they were going to convert it. And I'm not sure what was the other, Sears. Um, I don't know. I think that's separate as well. And I, I have said before, you want to revitalize that mall, put a Stu Leonard's in there. What is that? Uh -huh. And you would see it's a, it's a well, I've really seen good. Well, I've that for years. Um, what is that place? It's a shopping, it's a, a grocery Stu store. Stu Leonard's? Oh. It's, they're it's a in, unique grocery store. It's a great grocery store. They, they have one in... You um, know, that was my first job when I came to Connecticut. Oh, really? They have two of them in Connecticut, and one is in the Paramus Mall in New Jersey. Wait I mean, a minute. What are you talking about, two? There are two Stu Leonard's in Connecticut. No, there aren't. Yes, there are. There are three. Where's the third? Norwalk, Danbury, and Newington. I didn't know there wasn't Danbury. Oh, yeah. Okay, so three. Why can't they put one up here? Why did, they, why did this area always get neglected? Listen, I almost called Jill many times when, um, where all these is, was empty. Well, the, all, where all these is now, it used to be a nightclub. Yeah. All these? Yeah, that, no, that not, was a, not all these. Here? The one down in Waterford? Below. Yeah. That was a bowling alley. No, the bowling alley was in back off to the side. Was down there below. used to be um, a nightclub there, um, Bricotti's. Oh. Nice club. It was set up really nice. And then in front of that was a wall, um, uh, a radio shack. Okay. Yeah, but anyway. All right. Anything okay. else? So call me tomorrow and talk to Larry. <laughs> All right. I'll try to remember. You know, right. my memory is... Eh. <laughs> We're getting older, yeah, right? Yeah, you're getting to be a senior Have a good citizen. show. I'll be in New Jersey. But. Okay. Uh, All right. Take care, Karen. you lucky. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So what do you got there? What do you want to yak about? I Two guess. things. Well, I know there's a reason to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> Two things that I, I heard today. Well, this, uh, this one I think is kind of neat. I mean, but the other two... Chuck Schumer is still the uh, majority leader in the Senate. The man is a first-class ass. Idiot. And he wants to give amnesty to 20 million illegal yeah. aliens. Yeah. And you know there's only one reason for that. For the vote. For the vote. The man is, is such a schmuck, and I can say that because I'm Jewish and I know he's Jewish, but... He is, he is really a traitor to this country, um, along with a lot of the others. So I, I'm against this. I, think it, I don't think it's going to go anywhere because with the GOP taking the House, you know, it has you to know, go to You know, you don't have any idea. My mind can't even wrap around the idea of how much that would cost this country. It's going, we're all, they they want to do um, more money for COVID, which I don't think we need it. 
They want to do uh, more money for that money um, ain't Ukraine. Go to, that money ain't going to go to COVID. Oh, that, of course it's not. They, I mean, look, the bill for the giving up um, twenty thousand dollars for students. Yeah, was, that's, that's dead. It's blocked by two by two judges. Which and it Democrats, should be blocked. Is Democrats in power that don't like that idea. No, of course really. not. They're they're appealing it, and but the the point is, there's it should be blocked. Every American who ever paid for college should be outraged. Well, it is a lot of them that are. That's, I know, but that's one of the there, reasons. Is there enough? Well, obviously they keep blocking it. So but my question to that is, where do you start and where do you end? All right, 20, say 20 million people. Okay, so say as of today, 20 million people are automatically citizens. What about the other 50,000 that are coming? Do you say now, sorry, you can't come in here, you well, got to go away? That ain't going to happen. No, it's not, it's not, but Abbott has already put a uh, declaration of invasion into Texas. And that, requ and that right there should, requ should require government troops. He's bringing, in, he's bringing in state police. The National Guard, he said he was going to close those borders. So what are you going to do with all these but people? But our military, if, you, if you're claiming it's an invasion, and I, I know what he's doing, Yeah. but you look up anywhere in our government papers or whatever, I don't know, Constitution, whatever, if, that's like being invaded, our land being invaded, our soil being invaded. It is being invaded. Okay, but we're supposed to protect that. Our military is supposed to protect that. Our president is supposed to protect that. He doesn't care. I know he doesn't. He's a traitor. And I don't understand why these, these people keep believing in because him. Because they, they keep promising. Well, we're, going to give, we're going to give you $20,000 relief from your student loans. We're going to give you this, and we're going to give you that. It's all free to them. But can't but they, they see that? that it's no, a they don't sham? care. They're not, they're not paying taxes yet. They're not into this whole, like we are, we've been for 40 years. Yeah, but what about the students that, because um, I was reading, I have some paperwork on that, and they were talking about the very subject, and they were talking how, you know, well, this one had a $30,000 loan, this one had a $20,000 loan, and this one thinks it's a good idea, and this one is like God sent, and they're still in school. So, but then you get up there where, you get somebody that racked up a doctor, say racks up three, four hundred thousand dollars in loan. That's right. What's ten thousand dollars going to do? No, it's not going to do that much. But the fact that they're getting the relief, he, and he's going to be a doctor. He's going to be making. I know. Two hundred thousand or more the first year he's in in practice, especially if he works for a hospital. Um, and has a specialty. I mean, GPs are needed, but they don't make the kind of money that surgeons make. But it's, it's totally wrong. They knew going into college and signing those loans that they were going to have to pay them back. They have to start paying them back. I don't know if it got... January 1st. Oh, it's now January 1st. Yeah. Was, they did it by five weeks. They, isn't that nice? Wouldn't you love to be able to have someone come to say to you, well, look, you know what, Eric? We might do something down the road. Probably around election time, that, but that's only if we get voted in. Right. Um, we're going to do away with your mortgage, and then that time comes, and you're all excited, and you're making all these decisions, and then the election comes, and it's over, and now, well, we really can't do that yet. Maybe next election we'll do it. But all the, you know, but the thing is, they've they've racked up <coughs> like all all the. Um, <coughs> Free money they were getting from the COVID and everything, that ends in December, yeah. I believe. And none of these people who have gotten all this money, or I'm hopefully some, some know, but do you know that money that was given is taxable? Oh, yeah. I'll bet you a lot of those people don't. And come tax time, they're going to be owing money. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought this was free. Well, guess yeah, what? Some no, nobody ever realizes that there is nothing free in this world. No, I mean, it's... Except the air we breathe. Now, I'm sure they would well, tax that. Well, they're trying to figure out a way to do something so, about that. What was the other thing? TikTok. I am not... And you've t <laughs> we've had this discussion soon because you want me to go on to social media, and I refuse because I can't... Well, I don't go on TikTok. TikTok is a social media. Yeah. And 
it is um, a national, they're, they're calling it a national security now, a national security threat to the United States because TikTok is, is Chinese. Yeah. And every time somebody signs up for TikTok, it opens up yeah. everything that they have done the Chinese know what you are doing. Yeah. Should TikTok be banned in the United States? Well, Trump wanted to ban it. He wanted it out because of those reasons. So if you have people that are in a, in a seat of power, classified stuff like they went after Trump for, supposedly, mm -hmm. um, and TikTok can get all that information and somehow get into whatever you got going on, yeah, it would be a national security. So why, again, if Americans are supposed to be so smart, why are they opening their lives to China? I don't know. Why, does, why do families, uh, what's that saying goes about spreading your dirty laundry? But you, you see people, my, some of my, a couple of my sister-in-laws are like that. They post stuff on, on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, whatever. Mm -hmm. And... Well, my sister said this about me. Well, she said that about you. And who the hell cares? I know. You but know? This, is, this is why I won't do social media. No, you ain't missing anything. I know that. But uh, I'm, missing, I'm missing, like, announcements for certain things going on around the area or something like that. But there is no way. I, I don't need it. I, 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 a lot of people don't need it. Right. And I think most people don't need it. So I th I'm going back to TikTok, ex expounding on that. I, I really think there needs to be stricter laws in this country regarding China owning any property in this, in this country because they're buying up property all over, farms and everything like that. And I think that I, Trump tried to do something like this to get companies leave China. He, he Apple, is having, Apple is having a problem getting their phones made now, because, uh, uh, something with the COVID and whatever else is going on now. And they've um, given Vietnam and India 5% of the business right now. Why aren't they giving 50% of the business? Or why can't those be manufactured here? I know what their answer is going to be, because cost of of um, labor is, is too high in these countries. Well, guess what? Charge, then if you have to do it, charge more for it. But, but then you get unions coming in, and I think union, depending upon what it is, unions, if I owned a business and I'm paying my employees well and I'm giving benefits and these employees were saying, well, we want to unionize. I would tell them, you go right ahead. But the day you get a, a union, this business will be shut down. I'm going out of business. And then what That's would you That's the only hand you got against That's it. right. Would you rather have a job or, or you have nothing? I don't know why. I mean, the only reason a, a union exists is because in the beginning, the companies were screwing the workers. And I believed it back then. And, You're and, talking yeah, the and 30s, did, and, 30s did, and 40s. Well, even 50s, 60s. 50s. Um, and if companies insist on doing it that way, unions will be stronger than ever. But if a company does like you just said, like uh, in the beginning, like at Foxwoods, you got everything for nothing. Everything. And, and Foxwoods employees are unionized now, some of them? No, they were never unionized. Some of them are now. We ended up being unionized. Um, in, but did you not think you were being treated fairly? I, I thought actually because of what Foxwoods was taking away from its employees, we were gaining it back in our okay. union contract. Every year we got two point something percent raise. Mm -hmm. um, and every time there was a raise we would get like a lump sum of money from the time it was proposed to the time it actually happened. Uh, the insurance was uh, mm -hmm. Blue, Blue Cross and Blue Cross Blue Shield? Yes. Um, there was a time at there where you could buy, you, you got insurance, like, you know, you go to work for a company like Fox, which you automatically they, they give you life insurance. And usually it's whatever you're making, 
it, that's what it is. Like if you're making 50, 60 grand a year, that's what it's worth. Accidental insurance through Foxwoods was if um, something happened to you, say you died, got hurt there or whatever, I think you were covered for, like they would automatically give your family 50 grand. Okay. But with being in the union, engineering union, the union would also give you 50 grand. Okay. So you, you would you'd end up your family would end up with a hundred grand up to start. But how, right, but how much? How much does it cost you every time? Well, and if you never if you never even need the union, you spent all that money for nothing. Now I'm not saying that unions are necessarily bad, especially for what you're saying that Foxwoods was taking back some benefits. Well, that just shows you how greedy. Foxwood is, and well, they are gotta, greedy. It, yes, it, they are to a point, though. You got, you know, I don't know. I they're just, making hundreds of millions of dollars. Not all the time. Not necessary, but Foxwoods is not just Foxwoods. Can you imagine that they, they they own other casinos? Well, the, yeah, but can you imagine? Now think about this for a second. The overhead. You own one casino, the biggest in the country. And you stop buying into other ones or building other ones. The overhead of that is humongous. It, I know. So the interest alone, and there's been a lot of times Fox was, is, is uh, not made their, you know, interest payment. Why? That, that's a good question. Because, because why? Because, because they, you got so much money tied up into so many different things. How, how many times does Fox would have to re-mortgage? Properties and that's, stuff. The Malaysians have been ma have made tons of money off of Foxwood. That property yeah, should have Malaysians that property should have been paid off already. Maybe so, but the Malaysians they they don't own it anymore. They don't own the mortgage. No, or something. No, they well, they transferred all that. That's what these big business people do. Yeah. Trump, all of them. They you know they. I know the same thing yeah. like with your house. You have a mortgage with one place, and all of a sudden, it's, they don't notify you, but it's been sold by by them to another mortgage company. Yeah. I understand that. All right, but, I got um, I, you. You've got stuff, but yeah, I, oh, I got all kinds of crap. I don't know when to stop. All right, this caught my attention, and you folks out there, please chime in. Um, it's an opinion piece by Dave Collins, of all people. I think is this I'm not is sure this if I love yesterday him or, or today months. about Stefanowski. No, this is about Seaside. Okay. Oh, okay. I know it. Okay. It says, out of historical buildings of Seaside, slated for demolition. They've been going round and round what they should do with this building, these buildings. If you go down there, and you can, folks, you can go down there and walk. You can walk your dogs down there. You can, there's parking and so forth and so on. I worked there when I was like 14 and then 15 during the summer. I was a volunteer through the state. Um... It was an incredible place. I mean, there was tunnels and all kinds of stuff there. The people that were there weren't being treated the best. My opinion for this building is don't let somebody come in and build apartments here because they're going to be the highest end of condos you can get because mm -hmm. it's right on the water with a beach. Okay, Why not have – who's the biggest – Vet veterans Hospital, or people that have the mental problem. I guess it's all part of Veterans Hospital. Turn this place into like another Veterans Hospital for mm -hmm. people that need to recoup, people that come back from the wars, you know, and they got the, the mental issues and all this. Turn it into that for the military. You could get funding through the military, uh, from the government and the military. Mm -hmm. What better place for someone that's come back that's, had some body pots blown off or whatever. I, I don't mean to be graphic, folks, but I don't know how else to put it. Um, so why don't you call Chris Murphy? Or call Richard Blumenthal and make that suggestion? Well, Blumenthal, he thinks he's still in the service, so I wouldn't want to call him. <laughs> yo, yo. I don't know. I, th I think it'd be a great idea because what you're saying is developer proposes 40 new homes in Waterford off Great Neck Road. And they're only going to be 1,300 square feet, small houses. And it'd probably be 1,300 a month. That's what I wanted to know. They didn't say how much it was going to cost. They ain't cost. saying how much for the Beam Apartments on, um, on uh, Howard Street, either. They didn't say? No, they won't say. Okay. 
But that's but a good that's, idea. I, well, I'll, come on. If I can think of this, somebody else had to think of this. You know, I mean, or even put another, um, uh, what's the Jewish hospital there? The Jewish hospital? Oh, yeah. um, um, Danny Thomas's. The, the, that, well, that's not Jewish. It's St. Jude's. Saint, oh, it's, I thought it was. No, St. Jude's is not Jewish. Oh, it isn't? Okay. Well, anyways, whatever it is. Might not build one there, too, for, for the kids. I you mean, got, there's, so, got there's the, so many yeah, things yeah. you can do with this place. And it's and been then, empty for decades. Now, you'd have to do a lot of work on the inside. Of course. You have to probably take everything down and rebuild. No, you wouldn't. Not the buildings. You don't think so? No. Those buildings, they're, they're blocks. You might have to do stuff on the inside, naturally, to the walls. But I don't think you'd have much to have to do. Maybe the roofs, because they're probably all slate. Um, but them, them friggin' buildings ain't going to be falling down anytime soon. It would be a beautiful place for that. But mm. that's just my opinion. And not one person. Where were you, Martha? I thought you'd come up with this idea. Can't take her nowhere. All right. No. Now, I got a few other ones here. First of all, shots were fired at a catalytic converter theft. Too bad they missed. I bet if you shot them in the at ass. The catalytic converter that's the big thing now. They, they go around stealing. Oh, the stealing catalytic, catalytic yeah. converters, yeah. Well, this one says there were shots fired from wherever they were doing it. I hope they hit them. I do, too. Okay, so New London police arrest a man with 402 bags of fentanyl. Two men charged with sale of narcotics that led to a fatal overdose in East London. So what, what should be done with the guy who had 402 bags of, of fentanyl? He should uh, get a very... Tough, tough sentence, because all he's doing is walking around trying to kill people. Mm -hmm. So I would say, at a minimum, t attempted murder, because it's attempted murder. And if somebody dies after you give it to him, it's, it's murder. murder. Right. No ifs or buts, no 20 years in jail. 20, See, the whole they, damn problem with this country, Eric, is nobody's afraid to do anything wrong. They know they're not going to get... How friggin' sentences. lame is it when... The police in New London take dirt bikes away from somebody or from a group of people. They put them in a secure place that's supposed to be locked. <laughs> and that same night, these guys come and they take their bikes back. That's right. Wow, that is friggin' protection. Those cops should get hundreds of thousands of dollars apiece. If that wasn't a friggin' setup, I don't know what was. It doesn't matter what chair I'm in. It doesn't. I, no, you're right. <laughs> there's, there's, there's too much of it. Now, this is the pile I got for tonight, which we are not going to get to. Well, you've got I wanted five minutes. To, yeah, okay, so I talked to Larry before the show, Yeah. Larry Hampel, and he brought up a very good idea, a very good th topic. The costs this winter for heating oil mm. and electricity and gas and all that, what is the town, what is New London doing about all the properties they own? to keep the heat at a reasonable amount. Um, They're charging us. Why? Yeah, but, I mean, they, they, I know. They, gotta, they should turn it down and save some money, which would help us save some money. He was telling me that um, a few days ago they got 88 gallons of oil. Now, I think even oil Who is— got 88 gallons? Larry? Larry. Yeah. I believe they're starting to ration that to people on how much they can get. But— 88 gallons cost him, I could hear Bobber in the background, 80 gallons cost him almost $600 mm -hmm. for 88 gallons. I got 100.9 gallons of, of oil uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you still got it? I yeah. mean, you still got some? Oh, I don't turn our heat on. <laughs> My wife gets <laughs> That's why I'm cold all the time. Um, it cost me, I was at $5.29 a yeah. gallon. But you know what's interesting? What I don't what I don't understand, because gasoline has to be, oil has to be refined to gasoline, right? Right. Why is gasoline prices and they're high, but they're going down, but the price of oil is going up? So, if you go to BJ's or Costco and the price latest I heard or I saw at uh, BJ's was five, um, five three fifty four. 56 a gallon. And they're supposed to be cheaper than anywhere else, right? But that new Henny Penny on Boston Post Road in Waterford, mm -hmm. it's 339. 
Yeah, but everybody's making a big deal about that. Oh, gas has come down to 339. It wasn't there when he took office. It was even lower. Oh, I, I, yeah, it was like $2. So stop acting like he's doing you a friggin' favor. No, but the point, the point is these Costco and BJ's are supposed to, I mean, they, BJ's gets two truckloads a day of gas. That's how much they sell. Oh, yeah, well, the more you sell. But so why is it, I mean, you go to Groton on Route 12, their prices are less than Costco and, and BJ's. What else did you have? Okay. Um, oh, they're talking about the droughts out in California, and I've said this before many times. I've got one minute. You can get an aircraft carrier or some marine that can take salt water and turn it into fresh water. Mm -hmm. Why isn't anybody building companies or whatever along the coast to do that very thing and then pump the water to places that really need it? Dennis, if we were... 30 years younger, and we had this, maybe we could get a, start a company or something to, and to get backing to build something like this to help, to help that out. But you, when you've got people like Gavin Newsom, another schmuck, who has ruined California. Did you know he was somehow related to Nancy, to Nancy Pelosi? Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> like a, some sort of nep nephew or something. All right, like folks. That. See ya after Two next week. Next Two week, you guys are going to all butcher a turkey, so. <laughs> Hope you have a good Thanksgiving. This is something else I wanted to get to. I, I, I should have, but maybe next time. The FDA in England in here got uh, meat from a, a lab. What they do, and this, this is a good thing, because now you don't have to slaughter freaking animals. They take the, the cells from the animal and they create the meat. Cloning them. Well, no, no, they don't clone them. They put that, the cells.